Hey there addicts, Ron here with another unboxing video. Today we're going to be unboxing this game from Studio 2 Publishing, which just showed up on my doorstep like literally an hour ago. Been really excited about this one. Um, it's a Kickstarter that I backed um, back in June of 2018. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's dig right in and see what's what's going on. Okay, it's nicely packaged. Now, um, I've heard some. There's definitely been some reports of these these games arriving damaged. It doesn't look like uh, that's really any fault of their own. This is pretty well packaged. This is better than I expected. Maybe um, maybe this is different packaging than one was set over in Europe. This is really nice. This looks good. Lots of bubble wrap. Lots of bubble wrap. Okay, so we got we got this here. Um, this this must be the uh, the expansion, and then. Here's the game. Here's the game. Let me uh, let me get this out, and then we'll we'll jump right back in. All right, we got that stuff out of the box, and let's take a look. So um, this was in the priority mailbox. This was the this is the new Huntsville expansion, um, which was a small add-on expansion for the campaign. And then this little miniature here is the Huntress, which was um, the early bird or the first 48 hours or something along those lines. Um, it's a bonus there, so pretty cool. Looking forward to kind of taking a look at these, but I want to dig into the mace game first, and then we'll start looking at some of this uh, this add-on stuff. All right, here we go. We got the plastic off. So yeah, this is the Hunters AD twenty one fourteen. Um, this is a game designed by Matus Albrecht, um, is Polish designer. Backed this on Kickstarter in two thousand and eighteen, so it's been just a little over or a little under two years since the game was funded. Um, it's about I think it was about nine months behind schedule, but you know, honestly, everything's been really good. Um, I think all the normal delays, or all the delays were, were fairly normal. And I will say, out of the many Kickstarters that I have backed, um, Matus has been one of the most communicative sort of publishers or designers that I've ever worked, or I've ever seen. You know, he's constantly responding to comments, constantly, you know, answering questions and things like that. I think that's really good. It's been really cool to have such an engaged creator. So, um, you know, I, I think I forgive I'm even more forgiving of delays. I'm not particularly impatient when it comes to these things anyway, but um, when a designer is that engaged with their audience, I think that's really cool. So anyway, let's 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 dive right in. So this is a sleeve. Um, the game delivered in. I'm not sure if this is a Kickstarter exclusive thing. Well, I guess all of it's technically Kickstarter exclusive because I don't I do not believe this game is going to be going to retail. Um, Really cool art on the sleeve, and then the game itself is has just gorgeous art. There's a lot that drew me to this game um, as it was as it was on Kickstarter, but uh, the art is one of them, and just the the myriad game mechanics that all together just sounded really cool. So if you don't know anything about the hunters, I won't go into too much detail on this video. I do plan on doing um, a gameplay showcase of this, but. The Hunters is a one to four player narrative adventure game um, where you, it's kind of set in a post-apocalyptic, it's kind of after the bombs drop sort of setting. Um, but what's really interesting is you can see on the art here, there's um, a lot of robotic enemies. It kind of reminds me of Horizon Zero Dawn, which is a PlayStation game where you're kind of fighting against a bunch of, you know, robotic dinosaurs. In this game, there's like all these robotic animals that you're going to have to be dealing with in addition to other people. And uh, the players are a group of kind of mercenaries or scavengers that build a base, that do quests and missions, and overall, you know, I'm not sure what the overall goal of the game is yet. Hopefully, as we dive in, I'll learn a little bit more, but um, yeah, it's kind of a survival, narrative, settlement building, adventure game, all kinds of words, but I'm really excited to check it out. Uh, it plays one to four players, and the sessions are about two hours apiece, and I'm not sure how long the game actually takes to play through um, beginning to end, but... Yeah, it's you know it's a campaign game, so it's going to be probably fifty plus hours or whatever. So let's uh, let's see what's inside this box. All right. Wow, that is absolutely stuffed. Oh my gosh, it's like all the way to the top. I did not expect that much stuff in here. Um, this is cool. This is one of those games that I've definitely been following pretty closely, but I've tried to, um, not to 
watch any videos or anything like that of kind of what's in the box. I love being surprised. I love these moments of just like, I don't know what's in here. Let's, let's discover it all together. So um, I'm seeing lots of baggies. Love when games come with bags, some big bags and some small bags. I think these big ones are like save bags because um, you can, you obviously will save your game between sessions as you, uh, as you go through the campaign. So actually the first thing I want to do, I'm just going to kind of pull a couple things aside here is pull out these two books. So as expected in any campaign or adventure game, two major books, uh, the rule book and the mission book. And um, let's take a look at the rule book together here first. And what I'm going to do is, um, the way that I like to do unboxing videos is I want it to be, you know, partially uh, an exploration of what's in the box, but also a bit of information about the game itself. And in order to be able to do that, I need to be familiar with all the components. So. We'll look through the rule book. I'm going to go familiarize myself with the rest of the components, and then when we come back, I can take you on a tour of the box, explaining kind of all the different pieces and everything that's in there. First, though, here's the rule book. I um, just want to jump in real quick here and take a look. It is 32 pages long. Uh, the back has an index, which I love. Always good to have an index. Um, I, I like that it's on the back, actually. That's kind of nice. I don't even have to flip it open before I can start looking for whatever it is I'm looking for. And um, it looks fairly... Fairly heavily illustrated. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna kind of thumb through a few places. Lots of text. Um, I think this game is gonna be. It's gonna be a bit of a beast to learn. Um, and I've been following on Board Game Geek, and it looks like there are, you know, a few issues with the rule book, um, some translation stuff, and just a few places that it could have been a little more clear. But the community is already banded together around this game. I think the creators are already very active on BGG, and of course on the Kickstarter itself. So I'm not concerned about, you know, learning the game. I, I love learning new games and seeing what they're all about. Um, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I believe even the box has some errata already kind of printed in it, a sheet of errata. Um, lots of colorful art, lots of details, lots of text. It's information on how the missions work, different actions. This game has kind of a Gloomhaven light action system where you're going to be choosing how to play your cards and your cards have multiple ways that they can be played. Really looking forward to kind of digging into that. I think Gloomhaven has a really good combat system that's a little heavy and I'm hoping that this one's maybe a little lighter. Um, yeah, this looks like a great rulebook. Really, really thorough, lots of details, lots of graphics, everything like that. So I'm going to go take a few minutes, familiarize myself with the game, and then we'll get back to the, uh, we'll get back to the unboxing. All right, so first let's take a look at the mission book here. So the mission book uh, is about 60 pages long, and I'm not showing you the back because there's actually, um, notice that there's actually missions on the back, and I don't want to jump too much into spoiler territory here. So we'll just take a look at kind of the first page. Um, sets up a bunch of, there's a bunch of flavor text kind of setting up the campaign. What's the story so far? Uh, and then it walks you through the first few steps of setting up the game and then actually jumping straight into your first mission. Um, looks like it's going to kick you off straight away in a, Tactical combat situation, um, how to set it up, you know, here's your victory conditions, your defeat conditions, um, how it adjusts if you have two or three characters, which is really cool, um, as opposed to some games where they're one to four, but if you don't have four players, somebody has to play multiple characters. In solo, you're going to play two, um, you can't just go straight to one, but at least you can, you can cut it down where you're not managing four different people. That really helps me out when I'm playing a solo adventure game. And then there's a bunch of different pieces for how to set up kind of that initial scenario. What's the setting and what are the different event cards and everything that are in play. And then of course the rest of the book's going to be a whole bunch more missions, um, combat missions, all kinds of cool stuff. Recon, exploration, everything. Really excited about this. Looks like it's a good mix of story and um, and you know rules for setting up the missions. And then a lot of the story actually takes place on the cards as well. So interesting mix there. So. First thing I'm going to pull out are these. There are five of them, and these are the character sheets that you can play as. These are the different characters you can choose from. And uh, everybody's got kind of a... They don't really have a name. I think it's kind of up to you to decide maybe some of the flavor and background for these guys. But here's the different classes they have. Um, they each have a class. Or sorry, the different characters. They each have a different class. Um, so you can see real quick here, we got Soldier, Sniper, Recon, Huntress, and Medic are the five classes. And you don't know me that well yet, but the Medic's probably the one that I'm going to end up playing. I love playing support classes. I love when there is a support class. I'm curious how good it is in two play uh, if you're playing just two characters. But let's take a look. So each one of these has um, a set of statistics over here. You've got what your starting equipment is. So three food, one machete, one goggles, 
Down here is your health tracker, and as you level up, this is um, once you hit level six, like your health's going to be your health pool with that big. And then up here is your gear grid. Um, really excited about the gear grid. I'll show you how it works once we get to those tokens. But you basically are going to be kind of building um, what your character, your kind of loadout. It's very you know computer role playing game esque, where you kind of get to figure out how they're set up and what their equipment looks like. And then on the back of this, it just says profile has been hacked. That's kind of interesting. Just a little bit of interesting flavor there. Again, the art is is really cool. So let's just go through these really quick. Here's the sniper. You can see their statistics and equipment are different, um, but it does look like they all have the same health pool. Here's the recon. Notice the recon has more bag slots, but doesn't have as much uh, much slot, as many slots for equipment for guns as say the soldier here. You can see the difference there. So that's kind of cool. Recon can carry more stuff. These are um, kind of a thin, they're not quite, they're not cardboard. They are uh, cardstock. They're, um, they're matte, you know, they're, I, I like them to be a little thicker probably, but these seem like they're going to, they're going to lay really flat. So I think they're going to be fine. Um, then we got the Huntress here. And the Medic. Wow, the Medic it, it does not have a lot of equipment slots. That's interesting. I'm really curious what that's, what that, what that means in terms of playing the game. So there's those. And then we have um, some player aids, essentially. We've got, it looks like they're all the same. Um, it's got a bunch of information about here's the different types of things that you can equip. What are the things that you can equip? So when you're level one, this is about your settlement, by the way. So if these are the different buildings that you can build in your settlement, and each one has a list of things that you can build based on its level. So this is definitely one of the things that drew me to the game. I love games where you build a settlement or where you build a base especially in video games, but in board games, I think that's really cool too. So you can choose to, you know, if you're focusing on your armory, you might have access to better armor um, and masks, it looks like here, versus, you know, if you invest in your lab, you're gonna have a lot of, you know, cool bag equipment, different different uh, consumables and stuff. On the back side of this, is just a really nice aid for all the different icons in the game, and boy, are there a lot. Wow, look at all these. Um, four different types of attacks, all kinds of stuff. This definitely looks like it'd be handy. I like a good player aid, and I think this icon um, aid is an interesting choice. I'm curious how much this actually comes up when you're playing. How to resolve the different types of cards. So do you resolve a mission? Do you go to an indicated event card? All that kind of stuff. That's cool. I think that's really good. I'm not sure you need four of these on the table, but um, certainly one or two to kind of help make sure that you have access to that information. Okay, next we've got these uh, these card boxes here. So there was some confusion about these when they were delivered, um, and I'm not exactly sure. Let's just try assembling it. It looks like it's going to be really easy to put together, actually. Um, just kind of tuck this in here. So these are for actually storing your narrative cards as you make it further into the game. So they're going to be, there's some dividers and then a bunch of different event cards and stuff that you're going to be able to kind of build out. Sort of similar to Seventh Continent, if, you, if you've seen that, the box basically has a bunch of places for cards. This looks pretty interesting, um, definitely needs a little bit of reinforcement, but cool that they included these card boxes to help you stay organized. So it looks like there's two of those here in the box. Okay, next let's start pulling out these cards. There are a lot of cards in here. I love cards. Cards got to be one of my favorite, you know, kind of mechanics in games. Um, I love lots of different kinds of cards, different ways to play cards, different way to look at cards. I, I live for that experience of drawing a card off the top of the deck, not knowing what it is. So lots of different types of cards here. Um, get that. Here we go. So this is, I believe, a blueprint card. Yep. So these are blueprint cards that tell you how to make the different things. Um, and then this on the back here is an example of the building card. So this is the level three. Uh, this is this is the level three version of this building. These are action cards. So um, each class has its own set of action cards. Um, you start with a series of cards, and then as you level up your class, you're going to be able to add cards to your deck. Um, very similar to Gloomhaven. 
in terms of you know how that deck grows over time and makes you more powerful. There aren't as many classes in this game, obviously, as something like Gloomhaven. But um, there, so there's the five that we know of or that we have. But um, they each have their own deck and everything. So really excited to see what these are all about. And you can see here how the cards have multiple ways to be played. Um, so you can play either the top or the bottom. Um, and these are how they get played. So this is uh, as a reaction um, versus uh, this is versus as an action here. Lots of little bits and pieces, lots of information, lots of rules to learn. This looks like another deck of action cards here. Um, this is the Medic, so very excited about looking at those. And then interesting, this one here only has one action on it instead of two. So we'll dig these out, we'll look into these a little bit more. Um, these are some of the location cards. So as you explore the game world, you're going to be going to be able to go to different locations. And we'll get these out so we can look at them a little deeper. Um, but the, you know, here's the different types of the different card numbers and then stuff that you can you can purchase there. So if you sell it, it's worth this much. If you buy it, it's worth this much. And like I said, we'll dig in a little bit more into these um, once we get them out of the out of the shrink. More class cards here. And then we start digging into, oh, he's, these are the dividers. These are the card dividers, um, very similar to Seventh Continent, where you've got, you know, kind of different sets of numbers that you're going to be dividing by, just to help you find those cards that you need when, you know, you resolve an event and it tells you to look for card 222. This will make it a lot easier to find. I like that they included those. Uh, these are event cards. Um, there's a whole bunch of different types of event cards. There's road cards, where you just draw a random one and have an event. There's these numbered event cards, which are going to be typically going to be um, invoked by specific things in the game. So it might tell you to go to 523 or something like that, and then you resolve what happens. And um, the way the event cards are structured, you basically are going to have some flavor text, and then you have a choice. You know, do you want to do option A or option B in this case? And you flip the card over. This tells you there's actually two cards in this kind of... Um, they kind of go together, so you're going to be potentially reading an additional card to kind of figure out what the whole story is. So these event cards look like a lot of the world comes alive through these things. Um, and there's a ton of them, which is awesome, lots of different ones. And then there's also a bunch of enemy cards. So these are the cards that d denote the statistics and um, what the enemies do on their turns and that kind of stuff. So we'll be able to dig in a little bit more into these and see what those are all about, too. This is a butcher with a machete. That sounds... I'm not super excited about running into that guy. We've got more event cards. More event cards, and even more event cards. Lots and lots and lots and lots of event cards. Um, a big old stack of those. So that's awesome. All right, so we got some dice. We got two different types of dice here: defense dice and attack dice. And these are let's let's take a look at these here. Um, these are pretty nice. So these are the defense die. Looks like they've got three blanks and three shields. Um, so you're going to be rolling these to defend against attacks. Um, they're they're etched, which is nice. They're etched and painted. They're not silk screened or painted. Um, I like them. They're very simple. They're not particularly exciting, but they're going to get the job done. They're going to be very easy to read when you roll them. And the attack dice are very similar. Um, with looks like one to one to six bullets, so it's just a, this is just a D6 um, with some special, uh, I love this one that's like they're just sprayed all over the place um, with a bunch of different, uh, with bullets for the different numbers. It's cool. All right, so let's take a look at these, uh, these different tokens. This one's calling out to me because it's already pulled out of its, uh, out of its token sheet there. Just get that to focus. There we go. So um, the weapons in this game are really cool. So this is what goes on the on your character sheet. You can tell this is a this type of tile is a weapon. Um, so it would go on that weapon row. Some statistics about the weapon depending on um, you know your range and everything like that. What type of dice you roll. And what's really cool is or sorry the number of dice you roll. And what's really cool is these little um, arrows here are what allow you to slot different things into your weapon. So, for example, if I had the uh, tracer ammo, let's pull this out here, I could slot that in because it matches the two notches there. And now my shotgun, 
Sorry about that. Now the shotgun is equipped with tracer ammo, which is uh, such a cool system. So this one only has room for one attachment. Some guns might have multiple attachments where you could put like a type of ammo and maybe a bayonet or something else like that. And the, you know, whatever attachment you put on there has its own rules and and how it might affect your, your weapon. So really interested in this system. I think the system is really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing how it works um, in, in, uh, in play. So that'll be really cool. So let's go ahead and we can look through all these. There's a bunch of different weapon tiles here. So we've got the shotgun, the blunderbuss. Um, the blunderbuss is uh, probably the coolest looking blunderbuss <laughs> I've seen. Usually they look a little less cool than that. Here's some more weapons and some ammo types. So, and a couple other add-ons. So we've got a bayonet here, some pistols. Here's the hunting rifle. Also, we got some machine gun, an axe, and some of these you'll notice. Like here is an example. This rifle has um, actually two attachments slots, so you can do a double and a single here on the rifle. Really cool. Lo really looking forward to seeing how this system works. Here's a whole bunch of more equipment. Um, some some accessories. Some bag items, first aid kits, injections, frag grenades, all kinds of cool stuff. There's a lot of these. Um, here's some more. Armor. Melee weapon here, uh, brass knuckles or ballistic shield. Um, some add-ons you can do, so like sharpening or hardening. Some helmets. Auto medical kit. Alright, that sounds pretty useful. That's going to be the name of my medic character. <laughs> okay. Uh, some other add-ons. we got ammo types. we got some scopes, grenade launchers, night vision sights, uh, detonators, EMP mines, flares. Lots of cool different pieces of tech to try to you know stay alive out there while you're scavenging in the wastes. Uh, these are some different tokens for um, you put out on the map. So like explosive... Um, Biohazard, you know, flammable, there's some fog tokens, barricades, I think these are car wrecks here. Um, all kinds of different stuff that you can put out on the map to kind of add different tactical options um, as, you're, as you're doing your different encounters. All right, this token sheet here has a whole bunch of different tokens for use during combat. So we've got poisoning tokens. Uh, here's your health, health trackers. These are... Um, fuel cell tokens. So tracking fuel cells. These guys here are damage tokens, one and two damage. Um, a bunch of uh, hidden tokens, one for each class. It's kind of cool. You can see like the class symbol really, really kind of hidden on there for each class, the medic. Um, these guys here are story tokens. So these will get put out, you know, if, to trigger certain story events and scenarios. We've got some findings tokens. Just, uh, I'm guessing these are specific items that you can interact with in scenarios. And then we've got um, experience level trackers and a hunter's marker and, or sorry, a hunter's marker and a poles friends marker. So this is, I think, lo denoting your location when you're out on the board. This is another thing that's going to be on a location. Lots of cool tokens. Really like the, the style. I think it's really bright and simple, which I like. I think the theme comes across while also being fairly simple to look at. Next up we got a bunch of experience point tokens all the way up to 20s. We have morale tokens, that's what these these eagles are. We've got food tokens, whole bunches of food. This doesn't look like the best food that we're eating here, but hey, we're, we're making do. And then a bunch of uh, just different scenario tokens and room expansion tokens. So these are going to be events, these are going to be um, different room expansions, and then we've got just a bunch of other kind of random stuff that we can use to continue to track the scenario. So reload tokens, some time trackers, and uh, picking random. I think this is for determining your turn. Yeah. Really nice. Again, really simple. Not overly done. Um, you know, really straightforward iconography, which I can really appreciate. Okay, these are the module tokens, and it looks like I'm missing one I saw on the board there, so we're good. So these are module tokens with a few experience point tokens at the bottom here. These are all the modules you need to actually build things. So in the game, you're actually going to unlock blueprints. 
the blueprints will allow you to craft stuff in your base instead of having to go out and purchase it, um, which is really cool. And these are all the different types of components, you know, whether it's batteries or um, all kinds of gear, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. So you'll be combining these tokens together in order to craft different items. This guy, this guy got away from me. Okay, after that we've got um, one more you know, sheet of, of equipment items here. These are some really cool looking one, ones. We've got the sniper rifle, machine gun, the recoilless rifle, a chainsaw, a flamethrower. These are exciting. This one's got three attachment slots and that's really interesting. So I'm excited to see how that might get used. All right, next we're going to start looking at the different tiles in the game. And we'll start with this big one here. This is the base tile. It is double-sided. The other side's in Polish. Um, this base tile here has a few different components that are interesting. These locations here are where you actually track the different building locations that you have. Um, the rooms. So each room levels up and you'll like flip the cards or add new cards as they level up, which increases what you can build there. We've also got a... Um, this is the turn track, or sorry, the days track here, um, and the turn track here. So as you, as you track days, I did read you have 56 days to complete your mission, and after 56 days, if you haven't completed all of the main missions of the game, which at the beginning we don't really know what that means, what that end goal is, but if we haven't completed all the main missions, you actually lose the game and have to start over. Um, which I think it's going to be interesting. It might be a bit of a point of contention for some people. It could be interesting if the game just keeps going and the, the closer to that 56 day mark, the better you did. Um, there's lots of ways for you to avoid having to kind of replay the game if you're not interested in that. Um, I have seen some reports of people, you know, I got to day 10 and started over or whatever, and I could see how that might be useful. Just get to know the game, play a few days, and then um, start again, you know, with some of that information. But really excited about the space building aspect. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, the art's a little dark, but it's really neat. i um, excited to see what this looks like with all the cards and stuff on it. All right, so next we'll start looking at these tiles. These are all the map tiles that you're going to be using in the game. There's quite a few large ones and then a number of small ones. Um, and just looking at these, the art is pretty cool. I actually quite like it. Really evocative. Um, some symbols directly printed on here. So this, is, uh, this symbol means cover. Um, impassable terrain where you can you can shoot doesn't block line of sight but you can't go in versus blocking line of sight here because you're in a cave um, really cool and of course double-sided so you can you can always see um, how these can be used in multiple different ways as uh, as you play through the missions this means open ground pretty cool there's lots of these we'll go we'll go through them um, We'll go through them kind of quickly here. So a cave, some more, more canyon. Boy, I'm not looking forward to being in that canyon. Here's like a cityscape kind of, pretty trash looking. This game has a very post-apocalyptic cyberpunk kind of look to it, which I think is really cool. It doesn't have to be just like a dirty, grimy uh, post-apocalyptic. It's, it's got some of that, that kind of brightness that you get in cyberpunk. Here's like the the street in front of a hotel. Some ruined terrain there. Really cool and I'm really looking forward to seeing how these how these actually play out. They're all built into these large grids so it's less you know tactical space by space and more kinda like what zone are you in? Kind of an alleyway. The art is a little dark um, overall, I think it's probably looking a little darker on the camera than it is here in person, but it's fairly dark. Um, that's okay. This looks like the interior, like a boiler or something, like a factory. Oh, that's cool. It's a pub. Okay, and then we have some small tiles, or looks like, uh, yep, a few small tiles and some medium tiles. So these, of course, will all, you know, go together next to the other tiles to make out the different battle scenarios. Really excited to see how these all get put together. I think there's a good variety of tiles without being so many that you're going to spend a bunch of time digging through them all trying to find the ones that you need. Seems like a really good, a good number. And again, lots of really nice art. I think it's going to be really evocative, so... All right, 
before we get into the miniatures, we just have a few more pieces in here. And this is just kind of printed on normal paper. So here's the errata I was mentioning. There's already a bit of errata in here that I need to update. Um, so I'll probably go on and I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but I'll implement it in some way. Not too much. Looks like um, just a bit, just a few cards that needed to be changed. And then based on some updates on BGG, I think there's a few more things to, to update and clarify. But, but overall, not too bad. Next, we've got um, a handful of save sheets. Um, let's get about 10 save sheets. And this is so you can track all the information in your game, um, potentially playing multiple games at once or, you know, just tracking a run. So you've got, you know, here's your base. What information is in your base? What do you have in your storeroom? Um, and then a bunch of other information for the different zones here. So you can track all the details as you explore the game. And then on the flip side is the characters. So, you know, have you earned a few things? Um, what class and everything? Tracking your equipment? Everything like that. Just so you can save it. Now, in my case, I'll probably just be playing one game at a time. I might have, um, I might have a game where I'm playing solo and then another game that I'm playing with a group. But overall, I don't expect to be playing, managing too many of these at once. But this would be nice for multiple playthroughs, for sure. All right, and lastly, we've got the minis. So let me just pull this out, move the box aside, and we can start looking through these. This is a nice tray. I'm impressed with the tray. Um, it's nicely molded. It's big. It's very thick, um, which is nice. I think the miniatures will be really well, well preserved in here. I'm really impressed with the sculpt quality, actually, on these. They're, they're fairly small. Um, no assembly obviously required here. This is the giant rat. It's got kind of a bloated belly. It's pretty cool. Next up we've got the bug. Bug's like a little flying dude. It's cool. I'm impressed that they actually have this bottom part off the off the base there, so it's just being held up. Really neat looking little drone kind of enemy. Next up we have the bandit, bandit A. There's two types of bandits. Um, nice dynamic pose, looks like he's kinda shaking his fist at you. I'm really impressed with the, the detail levels, if we can get it to zoom in here. Um, for, you know, being single push, single, you know, piece plastic, I think that there's actually quite a bit of detail on these. They look like they'll paint up actually really nicely, so that's awesome, great job on these. Next up we have wild dogs. These are uh, kind of like little mini AT-AT looking guys. Um, like I said, very Hori Horizon Zero Dawn. If you've seen anything from those games, um, just the sort of robot monsters. They did a really good job on these. They look awesome. <clears throat> Here's some bigger ones. This is the dragonfly. Really neat looking miniature there. Very menacing. There is a Bandit B. Bandit B looks like more like a leader type. He's got a gas mask. He's pointing. You know when they point. He's telling his dudes who to shoot. He's got a cool backpack. So he's definitely been around. Nice pump action shotgun. Again, nice detail on these. Really nice. Next up is the spider. This one's this one's pretty good size. This one's really big and very cool. It's got these missile pods on the back. It's got this cool kind of four-legged uh, uh, movement system. Got a Gatling gun or mini gun. It looks like on the front there. Very cool. Really neat miniature. I imagine this thing is not super fun to fight. We've got uh, tigers. There's four of these tigers in there, so these are fair, these are a little more common. Versus, there's only one of those spider guys. Um, again, really cool. He's got his mouth open. He's growling. It really evokes, you know, a cat-like figure, but in this sort of robot uh, fashion. Really neat. Again, I feel like with the the paint job, these are just going to look so cool. This guy's. Other than the band, it's kind of the only non-robotic enemy. This is the underground worm, and honestly, I'm 
I'm just gonna, in my game, I'm hoping he just stays underground, because I'm not, this does not look like, like an enjoyable experience for anyone. Really cool, lots of good detail on the skin. It's very bumpy, very uneven. Just overall, really nice sculpts. This one's, I guess, kind of a mix of organic and uh, electronic or mechanical. This is the Cobra, so it has a very robot kind of face or head here. Um, maybe some armor plating, but then the body actually looks like it's um, organic. Or maybe not. You know what? Now that I look at it, really big mold line here, which is too bad. Um, some no, it wouldn't be too hard to cl clean up, I don't think, though. Overall, very menacing mini, really cool. This is the Rhino. Kind of looks like a very triceratops ish rhino mix. Um, he's leaning really heavily, so he's like mid turn in a charge. Just a cool dynamic pose to be in. Um, I think they really captured that essence of that type of animal. Um, very cool. This is the Defender. Big old mech. Kind of a walker. Looks like a little bit of bending here on some of the on some of the minis. Very easy to fix with hot water, so I'm not even concerned. Um, this guy's definitely got kind of a battle tech look to him. He's got these missile pods, big uh, mini guns with you know kind of belt fed. Very cool. Really neat miniatures in this game. And then the gorilla. It's kind of speaks for himself. Impressively detailed. Lots of little, just lots of little things to notice on the miniature. How it all kind of comes together. So for the characters, there are seven different miniatures in the game, and a couple of them come in pairs. And I believe these are the two snipers. They both look like they have sniper rifles. And there's kind of a male and female version for these and the medic, but the rest just has um, a male or female version. So those are the snipers, I'm pretty sure. There's no labeling or anything, so I'm doing my best here. I believe these two are the medics. Come on, here we go. So two medics, this guy's got a big bag. This guy could be the soldier as well. I think you can kind of pick whichever one you want. Honestly, I don't think it matters too much which miniature you pick. So pick your favorite. Pick the one that you think is the coolest. I think this there here is the Huntress. The sculpts are cool. The poses, I think, could be a little more dynamic overall. Um... But for the scale and size and the fact that they're non-assembly miniatures, I think they look really good. This guy's kind of hunkered down. Soldier. Recon. Got a cool mask on, submachine gun, very recon, very recon -y. So that's it for the miniatures. Well, and then we got the, uh, we got the one that came in the, this was a pre-order, or sorry, a um, early bird bonus. This is a crossover miniature from Waste Knights, um, which I did not back, uh, but it's the Huntress, I believe, from the um, from the character sheet. She's got a little flower in her hair. So, just a, an alternative sculpt. It's really nice. So that's it for the base box. But um, next we can look at the uh, new Huntsville expansion. So let's just add some side quests and some other stuff to the main game. Um, you can add it in right away. I I don't think it adds. Um, too much main scenario missions or anything like that, just, just more stuff to explore um, in a new area. So let's take a look and see what's inside the box here. 
it's a deck of cards. So mostly what this is going to be is locations, events, uh, etc. You know, road events and other event cards that are corresponding to this new Huntsville location that's going to be added from this game. So it comes with that deck of cards and then just a small, it's not really a rule booklet, just a rule sheet for adding this particular um, mission to the game. And specifically it has a couple scenarios built out and then how to actually make sure that you're adding it correctly. So when you're ready to do it, um, you just go in here and add these things in so that you can discover this location as part of your, uh, as part of your gameplay. Okay, so these are the action cards. Um, there's one deck of action cards for each class, and um, the action dark card decks are kind of split into two sections, so I've kind of split these two out here. So this is the Medics. This is the Medics starting deck. So you start with a deck of 25 action cards. Um, everybody starts with a deck of 25 that has some cards that are the same and some that are unique, mostly unique, um, although the first set is you know a lot of move and attack kind of cards. And then they have level up cards. So each character, as they level up throughout the game, they can get up to level 6, and when you level up, not only do you have more health, but you can actually add new cards to your deck. And your deck, it's kind of a standard deck builder thing where you're going to be shuffling your deck, drawing a certain number of cards per turn, and then those are the actions you can take on that turn. So good card play and being able to manage your um, your cards successfully is going to be a major part of, of you know being successful in the game. So this is the Medic's initial card set. So I've got three copies of Move, which allows me to move two spaces. I've got a couple cop I've got three copies of On Call. Sorry, four copies of On Call, which allows me to do some healing for another player. Um, you can notice that all the cards have multiple ways they can be used as a reaction or as an action. This number up here denotes that it's level one. So I know that these are all the cards that I start with at the beginning of the game. Some some shots. Um, I can move and hide. I could use a first aid kit. Uh, lots of different stuff I can do. I can attack on my turn. This is a melee attack. You can, you know, um, jump here, range attack three, move one space. It's kind of interesting. Um, lots of different stuff that you can do uh, during the game. So you'll have lots of different options on your turn. And then when you level up, every time you level up, you're going to get, I'm not going to try to show you too much here, but you get um, access to seven new cards and you get to pick four of them to put in your deck. And one of the cards is always a skill card that just boosts one of your character's stats. So like this one would here, if I bought this, it would make my medic have plus one persuasion. Otherwise, you know, so if I pick that, that's great, but then I only get to pick three of these other action cards. Um, to put into my to put into my deck, so that's cool. I like the leveling system; it's fairly straightforward, um, but it still has meaningful decisions, which I think is important, especially whether or not you're going to put that skill into your deck. No idea how useful that really is until we actually, you know, until I actually get into the game. But that's how the that's how the character cards work. Next, we can look at the crafting cards. So we've got um, these are the building cards that you can use to upgrade your base. So this, for example, is the forge at level one. You can see here it's level one, and then uh, you take it takes time to upgrade it. So if you start to upgrade it, you move it. It takes three days to upgrade, and once you finish upgrading it, it moves to level two. And you kind of see they like they made little differences between the cards so that you know you can kind of see it kind of leveling up over time, which is cool. You notice, of course, it takes a little longer to level it up to level three, and then once you get all the way up to level three, um, it's this is the process of leveling it up to three. So, um, here and then once it's at level three it's complete and then you can build the best stuff with it so those are the building kind of uh upgrade cards and then there's two other types of crafting sort of related these are cybernetics um i'm not i don't think you actually craft them these are things that you can purchase but there are different upgrades for your character there's a whole bunch of different ones um that allow you to kind of add you know special bonuses to your character so like bio blades for example you know gives you a little boost to your melee attacks which is cool and the primary thing when you're going to be upgrading or building stuff, crafting stuff, is you need these blueprint cards. So there's like roughly a billion of these um, for all the different things that you can construct in the game. And what's cool is once you get one of these, you can make as many copies of this as you want. And it shows you here on the card um, what types of equipment you need. And or it shows it what level it's required, what type of slot it is, and then the components that you need to actually build it. So once you have one of these, you can actually start crafting different things at the different locations. 
in order to have access to those new um, those new items. So brass knuckles, crafting a pistol, making camouflage, disruptor. So lots of cool stuff to craft. Um, really neat. So looking forward to kind of di diving into this crafting system and seeing what it's all about. And lastly, we can take a look at the location, uh, city event, road event, and just event cards. And look at this stack of cards. Like, this is absolutely insane. There's a zillion cards in this, and all, a lot of them have a lot of text on them. So really excited. This is where the main story is going to be told. Um, but let's just take a look at these. So first, we have these. Um, these are the location cards. Um, so you're going to start laying these out as you explore the game world, and you'll create kind of a map of, like, here's the different locations that you can go to. And essentially, they kind of have like a parent location, or the location itself, and then a parent location. Um, and then each of these places is going to be things where like you can encounter people. So there might be cards or events on these where you can go do events. Um, you can buy uh, blueprints for things, so like you know tactical light, brass knuckles, stuff like that. And each one of these is going to have different reasons to visit them, different things that you can buy, different events and uh, activities that are going to be located there. And this is a subset. There's a whole bunch of these different locations that you can go explore. Next is these uh, event cards. These are the cards that tell the story of the game through main missions as well as side missions. Um, all these cards have pretty much the same. These ones don't have a lot of uh, decision making points or anything, but you know, this is a whole bunch of flavor text. This is the initial one that you'll be reading to start the game off. And you'll notice here at the bottom it tells us to go play the mission, the beginning, which is the first mission of the game. So. These event cards will kind of walk you through all the different stuff in the game, the different scenarios you can do, and how your adventure is kind of progressing. And there are a lot of these cards, so quite the story to be told here um, in terms of uh, what's going on out in the world of the hunters. Okay, and then the last type of event cards are the city events and the road events. So these are all kind of organized the same. There's a cover card on top, so you can't really see what you're going to draw next because both these cards are double-sided in terms of text. So we draw a city event, here this one's called the Haunted House, here's a bunch of text kind of setting up the story, and then you typically are going to have a decision. You can either you know, choose to do A or B, and then you're going to flip the card over and see what A and B let you do. Now in this case it looks like they give you a couple event cards um, that to, go, to go resolve, so they're going to dig into this big, this big event deck. And who knows, you know, some of these are going to be tied to the main mission, some of them are going to be you know, random one-off encounters, all kinds of stuff as you explore the city. The road events work pretty much the exact same way, but there's actually three decks in here. I just put them all together for ease, but you can see this one's the one skull. And then there's three and two skulls. I put those in the wrong order, but there's the two skull set and then the three skull set. And this is basically just these are types of events take place in more and more dangerous parts of, uh, of the world. So when you're building your world map, these location cards, many of them are going to have these skulls on them to tell you like what type of terrain they're in are they and you know how far away from the from the civil some from the settlement are they or something like that so you can um, you can kind of guesstimate how dangerous these encounters are going to be based on that and that's those cards all right and finally we've got the enemy cards so these cards are going to be laid out when you're doing a mission to kind of give you information about the enemies what type of abilities they have what type of stats they have, the type of dice they roll, how many health they have, etc. Really nice art on all of these, um, kind of depicting the different types of enemies that you're going to be encountering. Um, again, the names, you know, are a little, they lack flavor, but um, I think that overall, you know, the art really helps fill in the gaps on these. Really nice art. All right, guys, well, that's it for the Hunters AD2114 unboxing video. I am planning on doing at least a setup and single scenario video for this, um, hopefully soon. I'm really excited now that I've dug through all this. I'm really excited to get, get the game on the table and learn it, and then uh, hopefully showcase for you guys just how it's played um, and what, you know, what it really feels like to get out there and explore that, the wasteland and read those event cards and kind of upgrade your characters and everything. Um, so thanks, thanks again for stopping by. I really hope this video helped you get a little more familiar with this game, what's inside this box. Um, and you know all the cool components. I think the components look great. I'm really excited to get it on the table, and and yeah. So if you're interested in that, um, 
Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you'll get notified when any of those new videos come out. But hey, if you can't subscribe, that's okay. Give the, give the video a like if you liked it. Leave a comment and I'll be happy to read it and respond. Any feedback you can give me, I'd be more than happy to hear. But either way, thanks again for stopping by and until next time, stay safe in the dungeon.